I'm Jim Kunkel, and welcome to Coding's Talk. I'm joined with a great guest today who's Juan Caballero, Master Coding's Inspector, and he's also the principal with Naval and Industrial Solutions in the great country of Panama. Juan, welcome. Thank you, Jim. Thanks for having me in this excellent episode. It's great to have you, and uh, we're going to be talking about a really important topic uh, on today's little short that we're going to be doing. And before we do that, why don't you provide a little bit of background about Naval and Industrial Solutions in Panama? Okay, thank you, Jim. Naval and Industrial Solutions is a third-party consulting and inspection company. Um, we focus on the inspection of concrete and steel structures. And, um, you know, we, we are about to celebrate our 10 year anniversary next year. And from the very beginning, we have been heavily involved with the marine coding inspection for ships uh, in dry dock, but also for ships also passing the, uh, through the Panama Canal. So we, we have also inspect uh, not only holes, but also ballast tanks, cargo tanks, and uh, onboard, onboard maintenance uh, topics for, for different customers passing through the canal. Yeah, and that, that's the reason why I wanted to have you on, because I know your background, you know, working in the marine industry and also, too, you're not only looking at uh, ships that go through the ocean, but also in uh, fresh water as well, which, you know, when we talk about, you know, biofouling and we talk about, you know, biomass that can build up on a ship's hulls. Uh, it can be fresh water. It could be salt water. And, uh, you know, there are various steps involved in order to properly prepare that surface before coating application. And importantly, anti-fouling systems are installed. You know, let's talk a little bit about biofouling, which is basically a biological growth. Um, it can be plant organisms. Um, it can also be marine animals as well. As I mentioned, it can be in the marine environment, the saltwater environment, but also in the freshwater as well. But also, too, with biofouling, when you think about it, we're not only talking about ships. Um, it could be intakes for water, uh, uh, surf, you know, water treatment facilities. Um, it could be on grates that might be in, in pond systems. So there's so many different areas that really biofouling can um, can impact um, a asset uh, still and, and concrete as well. You know, when we're looking at biofouling, you know, how critical is it to have control over that, especially for a ship? Yes, uh, Jim, thanks for, for that excellent question. Um, having biofouling on, on chip holes is very, very critical because um, it don't only pollute the vessel hole, but also uh, add some dragging when the vessel is um, is ongoing, and you know this can lead to different uh, consequences like uh, more fuel consuming. Um, it it can also uh, contaminate other other areas, uh, bring invasive species to other to other areas. And that's why it's very important to understand how the bi biofouling forms and very important when the ship is, for example, a dry dock, why it's important to uh, properly uh, eliminate them and have the right procedures to prepare the surface and apply the coatings in, in following the, the, the good practices on the, of the industry. So you can have um, um, durability of the anti-falling system that is expected by the by the owners, by the fleet managers, and and the vessel can uh, can can have their their expected uh, performance over over the years because uh, depending on the size of the vessel, they may come like every two years to dry dock or even uh, every five years. So, for example, so that, that's why it's very important knowing how to control the biofouling, but it's also important the process that you follow when the vessel is in the dry dock to correctly uh, perform all the, all the activities. 
Yeah, and and everyone who's watching uh, this episode, you know, you might have gone to uh, an ocean resort and you saw a really old ship that had, you know, barnacles built up and other type of uh, sea life and uh, growth and organisms on it. You can imagine that as that mass is growing, um, it is causing drag, which increases yeah. fuel consumption. It slows the ship down as well. And even just a little bit of drag is enough to really cost an owner money. But in addition to that, is it, it also impacts the timing when it comes to shipments and things like that. So having a good control over that is so critical. The other thing with um, biofiling, with the uh, anti-filing systems, um, they are heavily regulated because the United Nations has the uh, law of the sea. And the law of the sea really has strict limits when it comes to anti-filing systems as to what impact they might have on the marine environment. Uh, in addition to that, too, as you talked about earlier, you have ships today that go from one part of the world to another part of the world, and evasive species can hitch rides uh, on the vessels, on the hulls. And by having an anti-fouling system, uh, you greatly reduce that potential of evasive species. Now, let's go ahead and let's talk about some of the common methods involved in surface ship preparation. Uh, the first one I wanted to talk about, and and I remember uh, a really amazing photo that you provided to me a couple years ago uh, when you were actually uh, using a hydroblasting unit. And I love the name hydroblasting, but can you describe what hydroblasting really is? Well, hydroblasting is a method of surface preparation that use water as the as the way to, to, to remove the dirt, contaminants, and uh, even corrosion from, from vessels. And it uses different pressures, and it, it will depend on which pressure you are using. Uh, for example, it's very common in the shipping industry that you can use like 10,000 PSI for doing like a general washing, and that will be considered as a high pressure water washing, uh, uh, water jetting, sorry. Or you can use pressures above 20, 25,000 PSI, and then it will be considered as a ultra high pressure water, water washing. So there are other uh, lower pressures where you can, all, you can only be uh, considering that or cataloging that as a low pressure a water washing and high pressure water washing but when it comes to to water jetting it will be pressures that goes above 10,000 psi and it can go as as, as high as 50,000 or 60,000 psi so it, it will depend on the equipment and and what you are looking for um, to to pick the best surface preparation methods to, to use in the, in, the, in the shipping industry. And, and I consider it one of the best methods to use in the shipping industry because um, you will take out like salt contaminations, which you know that is uh, heavily uh, impact on, on, on all the marine environments. And it, it will also uh, remove like grease contamination and and will uh, rip off the paint and the and the corrosion um, like all in, in in one step so um, it will not produce like so many uh, uh, contaminants of, of like the grid blasting that then you will have to make like a cleaning process or um, vacuum process to 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 get rid of of that and it's also safer with with the environment so it's very it's very uh, useful when when water jetting is is done on 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 the shipping uh, repair of of vessels and, and another method that's uh, used because a lot of times with a ship haul you might not have the ability to use one method when it comes to surface preparation there might be some accessible hard accessible areas that you might need to utilize for example a rotary um you know power disking where you're basically you know, using um you know kind of a bristle type of applicator to help uh, strip that off and in addition to that um there are so mechanical descalers that can be used as well and then typically 
um, solvents that can be utilized as well. But again, uh, when you're using solvents, you need to make sure that you are cleaning the residues off and that the surface, uh, you return the surface to a clean state from that. And then the big thing that can be done is a brace of blast cleaning. And this is really a very common process when it comes to a brace of blasting. Um, you know, typically, what are some of the benefits of a brace of blasting for the ship hall? Well, the, the benefits uh, when you use the abrasive blasting for the ship hull is that production time is faster. Uh, maybe you can get more square meters done uh, if you compare it with uh, water jetting. Um, you may get, as you mentioned before, to, to some spaces that maybe the water jetting cannot get in because uh, you know water jetting use these huge lands and the operator is kind of of uh, holding a big pressure and and yeah maybe he cannot get uh, very well to some spaces that will be other benefit and um, and at some point that you can produce some profile um, on ship holes um, mostly on, on on the maintenance side uh, you kind of don't need um, a lot to produce a profile because it already have the existing profile. So that's why water jetting is also good. But if, if in some instance, uh, for example, when you, you made like insert repairs that, uh, let's say the, it's very common in the dry dockings uh, uh, jobs that the vessel come in and they have to, to cut some areas with, uh, you know, welding cut and then install back a new plate of, of steel. And, 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 and there is when the, the abrasive blasting comes into a very useful uh, situation that you will need to prepare those new steel inserts uh, with uh, abrasive blasting because the water, water jetting will not produce the profile that is needed with a new steel. So, the most of the shipyards I have uh, worked in, in, you know, in the in, in the process of my uh, professional experience, always have like um, an area, special area, where they can also do blasting to this uh, new uh, new steel that they always need to have on stock um, in order to to repair uh, some some areas that they have to to, to change. So it, 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 it have, uh, each of, of the methods have a, a benefit and a disadvantage. So you, you only need to know them very well and use them at your, at your favor. Yeah, very good. Juan, I appreciate this opportunity to have a conversation with you related to um, surface preparation of ship hulls prior to coatings and anti-filing systems installation. Uh, Juan, how can people get in contact with you and get additional information on NIS uh, Panama? Okay, the, the, the best way to get in contact with me is by, by email, maybe. Uh, my email is Juan, as my name, dot Caballero and uh, at naiso.com and also on my social media um, as a master coding inspector in Instagram, on Facebook. Great. And I'll make sure I put links in the, in the uh, comments below. Juan, thank you so much. Thanks to you, Jim. It's very uh, a great pleasure to be always in these conversations with you. I appreciate you watching this clip from the latest release of Coding Stock. Please consider joining my YouTube channel by using the link posted in the comments below. Have a great day.